A video call is a situation we can all relate to at the moment. We sit in front of our computer and we see a speaker and we hear their voice through our headphones. At the same time, maybe our phone rings or an email arrives. And all these things happening at the same time create and increase cognitive load. And the question now is, does this cognitive load influence our perception? In such a video call, we receive video, uh, visual information and we, we receive auditory information. And we need to decide which parts of the visual scene and which part of our auditory scene we want to integrate into an audiovisual object. This is called multisensory integration. And the question now is, is this multisensory integration an automatic process or is this multisensory integration influenced by cognitive processes? This is a question I want to examine with my PhD student, Jorgos Michael. We want to examine whether our perception is sensitive to a depletion of cognitive resources and which neural processes reflect the interaction between cognition and perception. To do so, we use the sound-induced flash illusion. The sound-induced flash illusion is a very established experimental paradigm in which we present one visual stimulus together with two auditory stimuli. And in about half the trials, this induces the perception of an illusory second visual stimulus. In the last 20 years, the sound-induced flash illusion has been used across many different populations, and it has been shown that this is a bistable perception. So the question now is, what causes this bistability? And what influences our multisensory perception? We've seen from many studies that, for example, the brain state influences our perception. So the state of our brain at the moment the auditory and visual information arrive in our brain influences how we process this information and how this information is then processed along the processing hierarchy. At the same time, Parameters of the experiment also influence our perception. So if I change, for example, the contrast or the loudness of the stimulation, this also influences our perception. However, we only know little about the influence of cognitive processes on our perception and multisensory integration. To answer this question, Jorgos Michael and I combined the audiovisual perception task, the sound induced flash illusion, with a second cognitive task the NBAC task. This NBAC task um, is a cognitively demanding task with which we can reduce the available cognitive resources um, and we can increase cognitive load. And what we see is that the NBAC task increases the cognitive load and depletes our cognitive resources and the increased cognitive load increases the likelihood to perceive the sound induced flash illusion. We replicated this effect in an independent second experiment where we combined the behavioral task with an EEG recording. And luckily for us, we could replicate our main effect. So we again see that depleting the cognitive resources by an NBAC task increases the likelihood to perceive the, uh, the sound induced flash illusion. And we also see that this interaction between cognition and perception is reflected in three stages of neural processing. In a first stage, we see an early beta band power suppression, which probably reflects the audiovisual mismatch detection, so the detection that auditory and visual information is not the same. After that, we see an increased frontal theta band power, which likely signals the need for increased top down control to resolve this multisensory conflict. So the conflict between auditory and visual information. And then in the third step, we again see a decreased frontal beta band power, which then presumably reflects the integration, so the formation of a coherent audiovisual percept from this mismatching audi audiovisual um, streams. So we interpret our findings that multisensory integration involves multiple processing stages. We have a separate stage 
that detects the mismatch between auditory and visual information, followed by a second step that involves the conflict resolution and the formation of one audiovisual object. So this cross-modal integration, the cross-modal interactions in the sound-induced flash illusion are on the one hand sensitive to the cortical state. We've seen this in prior studies where we see, for example, that the local cortical excitability influences how we process the incoming bottom-up information. Here now we see, in our two studies, we see that manipulating the available cognitive resources also influences multisensory integration. However, this is not an influence on the level of primary sensory areas, but it is reflected in frontal um, cortical activity, likely reflecting top-down influences on our perception. So the first stage in our perception stage, we see that local cortical activity reflects the local cortical excitability and influences the initial processing of the auditory and visual streams. The bottom-up stimulus processing influences the signal propagation across our um, signaling stages. In the second stage, in the integration stage, we see that depleting the cognitive resources influences what we do with this incoming information. So it influences um, our multisensory integration, but not the initial stimulus process. So depleted cognitive resources require increased um, engagement of top-down processing to resolve the conflict of auditory and visual information. 